Hello everyone, welcome to another WordPress tutorial. In this lesson, we will learn how to add customizable appearance options to our theme. This means that users of the theme will be able to make changes from within the WordPress admin panel. So perhaps they would like to change the color scheme of the website. Now let's dive straight into a sneak peek of the final product of what we will be creating together throughout this video. All right, so here we are in the WordPress dashboard and let's pretend that we wanna change the color scheme of the website. I will go to appearance and choose the customize option. Here is a preview of what our website currently looks like and on the left side of the screen, we have all sorts of customizable options. Now, if your screen does not have this exact set of options, don't panic, every theme is different. And we will learn in this lesson how to add new sections to this sidebar. But let's imagine we wanna change the color scheme, so we click on standard colors. Okay, so it looks like I can change the link color by simply clicking on this. I wanna change it to more of a green or teal. Okay, great, we see that it updates. Button color. Let's try a pink. Okay, great, we see that these buttons down here changed as well as the search button. Oh, and I can also choose a hover color. Let's go with a darker pink. So now when I hover over these, you can see they use a different color. Okay, I'm happy with this. I will click save and publish. And it's that simple. A user of our theme just customized the website's color palette. Now for the remainder of this lesson, we are gonna roll up our sleeves, get our hands dirty with code, and learn how to add this functionality, this customizable nature, to any theme. This is going to be a lot of fun. Let's get started. All right, behind the scenes, I just ripped out all of the customizable functionality of the theme. We are back to the default color palette and we see that colors is no longer an option in the sidebar. So now we can work together to add that functionality back in. All right, so open up your theme folder in your favorite text editor and we are going to jump into the functions.php file. Let's scroll down to the bottom. Let's create a comment to stay organized customize appearance options. All right, the first thing we wanna do is create our own function and we can name this anything we would like. I will name it the name of my theme, learning WordPress underscore customize register. Before we write out the body of our function, let's first tell WordPress when and where we want our function to run. So we will add action we will tack on to the WordPress hook named customize register. This will tell WordPress exactly when and where to run our function. And then we just include the name of our function. So let's copy and paste the name into these quotes. And we are off to the races. So now we can begin working on our function. Now, everything that we are going to do in this lesson is dependent on a WordPress object named WP customize. So we wanna be sure to pass that in to our function. So within these parentheses, WP customize. All right, now we are in great shape to begin adding the meat and potatoes of our function. But first, there are three terms I want you to be familiar with. Controls, settings, and sections. Let's review these really quickly. So a control is the form element that users actually interact with and click or tap on to make their choice. So whether that be a color picker or a text box, you get the idea. A setting is how we save the user's choice. So let's imagine they use a color picker, which is the control, and they choose pink. That choice, that value of pink, gets saved into a setting. So when you think of a setting, think of a database. We can set or save values into a setting, and then later on we can get or load values from a setting. And finally, a section is just a group of options. So examples of this would be site title and tagline, navigation. In our case, we are going to create a section named standard colors. You get the idea. All right, now that we have that shared vocabulary, let's write some code. So we want users to be able to choose a color for links on the page. So let's begin by creating a setting that we can store their choice in. So to create a setting, we are going to dig into the WP customize object and use a method that it has named add setting. Let's give our setting a name. 
You can name it anything you would like. I'm naming it an acronym for my theme name, Learning WordPress, and then link color, comma, and then we are going to create an array with a few details about this setting. So array, we can choose a default value, so default, in my case, I will use the standard blue color from my style sheet. So I open up style.css. Here is the hexadecimal code. So let me copy this. All right, so default should be my standard blue. You might want to set a different default or initial value, comma. Let's set transport. This transport property controls how WordPress will update the preview of our website when we are on the customized screen. In order to keep this lesson as simple as possible, we will provide it a value of refresh. And that's all of the code that we will need to create a setting. Now let's create a section that this setting will be a part of. So again, we will use the WP customize object. We want to dig inside it and use the method that it has named add section. Let's give our section a name. You can give it any name you would like. I will name mine Learning WordPress Standard Colors, comma, and then we are going to create an array with details about this section. Let's clean up this formatting a bit. All right, so the first detail we will add is a title. Now the title is the on-screen label for the section that users will actually see. So this name that we defined is the programming name or the code name that should be computer friendly. The title should be human friendly. So instead of just including the name in single quotes, we are going to use the WordPress translation or localization feature. So we include two underscores, parentheses, quotes, the title that we want. So I want standard space colors. And then we include the name of our theme. We actually spell it out. So my theme name is learning WordPress. Let's include another property named priority. So this controls where the section will sit. Will it sit at the top of the list of sections? Will it sit at the bottom? So we can tweak this later on. Let's try 30 as a first attempt. All right, this is all of the code that we need to create a new section. Now let's get to the fun part. Let's create a control. So again, we want to dig into the WP customize object and we want to use a method that it has named add control. Now the next bit of code will differ depending on what sort of control you are trying to create. So there's a color picker, there's a text box input, there's a file uploader or a photo uploader. So we are going to use the color picker. So we want to leverage a pre-existing WordPress class. We want to create a new instance of the class named WP Customize Color Control. This way we don't have to build a color picker by hand. WordPress is taking care of all of the heavy lifting. So first we will tell WordPress that we want to continue using the WP Customize object. Then we get to name this control I will name this control learning WordPress link color control. And then just like we did with our setting and our section, we will create an array with details about this control. Let's fix up this formatting a bit. So first we will give it a label. This is the on-screen text that users will actually see. So again, we are going to use the WordPress localization feature. Link color is what I will name it. Include the name of my theme, learning WordPress. The next property is we need to assign this control to a section. And the code name that we gave our section just a moment ago was learning WordPress standard colors. So let's just copy that. Paste it in down here. And then we want to assign this control a setting that it can store the user's choice into. And we named our setting a few moments ago learning WordPress link color. So let's copy that, paste that here. And that is all of the code that we will need to create a control. So now let's save this file and reload the customized screen. All right, if you see an empty screen, you obviously made a mistake while you were coding like I just did. All right, so we saw what can happen if you code from memory, you can make mistakes from time to time. So I just checked the official WordPress codex. 
This, instead of setting, should actually be settings, plural. So let's save again, refresh the customize screen, and we are in business. I see a standard colors section. Let's click into this. Let's change the link color to more of a green or teal. Now we see that nothing changed. All of the links are the exact same blue. So we aren't done yet. There's one more step. WordPress cannot read our minds. We need to write a bit of CSS to tell the website what to do with this new color that the user has chosen. So let's hop back over to functions.php. Let's go to the very bottom and let's create a new function. Comment to stay organized. Output customize CSS. So let's create a new function. The only job of this function is to output CSS with the new color codes. So I will name this function learning WordPress customize CSS. You can name it whatever you would like. You know the drill. Before we actually write the function, we want to tell WordPress when and where to run this custom function of ours. So we will use add action. We will tack on to a WordPress hook named WP head. So our styles will be output in the head of the web page. And then we just include the name of our function. All right, let's write the meat and potato now of our function. So I actually want to drop out of PHP, the very beginning of the function, and then let's drop back into PHP when we close out the body of the function. So now within these lines, let's jump into CSS mode. So we want to output a style tag with a type of text CSS. Let's close out the style tag. So when we are in the style tag, we want to create a rule that targets all links on the page. So this is the CSS selector. And then what sort of declaration do we want? We just want to give it a color. Now, traditionally, we would include a hexadecimal color code, so that would be black. But we want to output a dynamic color code. So this is where the setting comes into play. So when a user chooses a color from this color picker control, their choice, the color value, gets saved into the database with our setting name. So now we can retrieve that color from the database by using the setting name. So we gave the setting a name of learning WordPress link color. So I will copy this name to my clipboard. And then down here where we are outputting CSS, we obviously want to load that color value from the database. So let's drop into PHP. And we want to echo that color value. So we can use a function named get theme mod and then within these parentheses, we just include the name of the setting. So I'll paste in the name of the setting. We are done here. Let's save this file and let's reload the customizer screen. Okay, let's try this again. Standard colors. Let's choose a green or teal. Voila, we are in business. Let's click save and publish and view the website from a non-admin perspective. Just pull open the website in a new tab. Now I want to show you that CSS doesn't read our mind. So for example, if we go to the About Us page, we see that the active or current page tab is still using the old blue color. And it would be nice if it used that same dynamic teal custom color. So to fix this, all we need to do is hop over to our style sheet and see where else is this default blue value being used. So let me copy this value and just search for it in this file. Your website would be different, but what I see is that it's being used as a background color for the current menu item or current page ancestor, which makes sense. So that's where this blue is coming from. So all we need to do is copy the CSS selector for this rule, head back over to functions.php, and let's create a new rule within our CSS function. So underneath this rule, I'll paste in that selector and then we want to give it a background color. And let's just reuse this code so we don't have to retype it again. Paste it in. Let's hit save. Refresh our website. Voila. Now we won't be learning anything new in the remainder of this lesson, but practice makes perfect. So let's practice setting up a new customizable option for button color. The new option will live inside this same standard colors section and it will control the background color for these buttons down here and also the search button in the header. 
So let's jump back over to functions.php. We want to create a new setting to store this new value in. We can literally just copy and paste our old setting, update the name. So let's change this to learning WordPress button color. It can have the same default color. All right, we do not need a new section. We just need a new control. So again, let's just copy and paste our old control. Let's change the code name for the control. So instead of learning WordPress link color control, I will change this to learning WordPress button color control. Let's change the label to button color instead of link color. It can live in the same section, obviously. And for settings, we want to use the new setting that we just created not even a moment ago. Remember when we copied and pasted the new setting, we gave it a name of learning WordPress button color. So we just need to change this from link to button. Now, if we save this file and refresh the admin screen, the new control is here, button color. But remember from earlier, WordPress doesn't read our mind. So before we expect this to actually do anything, when we pick a new color, we need to write a bit of corresponding CSS. So let's hop back over to our CSS function at the bottom of functions.php. We need to create a new rule that will target these buttons down here and also the search submit button. So let's start with these buttons down here. Now I know that they have a class of BTN for button. So that's what I'm going to search for in my style sheet. Here's that rule. So I'm interested in copying and pasting the selector from the rule. But on your website, if you have no idea what class names a certain element is using, just right click on the element and click inspect element. And that should help you figure out what class is being applied to that element. So anyways, back to this, I want to copy the selector. Then back in functions.php, we're creating a new rule. So let's paste in that selector. And we want to apply a background color so we can actually just recycle this line from an earlier rule that we created. Let's copy and paste it and simply change the name of the setting that we are trying to retrieve from the database. So let's just change this from link to button. Now let's save, refresh the customization screen. Let's take the button color for a spin. Excellent, so these buttons are being updated, but the button in the header, the search button is obviously not being updated. So now we just need to add on a selector in this rule that targets the search button. So let's search in our style sheet for search. Okay, so here is the CSS related to the search button. So I'm interested in this selector, copy. Back in functions.php, let's just add a comma and paste in that selector. Save, let's refresh and give the admin screen another chance with our new code. Standard colors, let's pick a pink. Perfect, it's working just like we had hoped for. I will click save and publish, and we are done. I know in the beginning of the lesson, we saw an example of choosing a third color for the hover effect, but what would a lesson be if I didn't give you a bit of homework? So you have all of the tools necessary to create a third color. So just create a new setting and a new control, add it to this section, then output a new CSS rule. You will target all of these same elements, but you will add on a pseudo selector of hover. And then be sure to update the setting name that you are querying from the database. If at any point you are completely stumped and stuck, feel free to download the source code of the completed demo files with the hover effect in place from my website. I will include a link in the description for this video where you can find the zip file so you can compare your code to the completed code. That will bring this lesson to a close. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you feel like you learned something and stay tuned for more WordPress and web development tutorials. Thanks, bye.